From affordable transportation to tossable tuners, this pint-sized hatchback is one of Ford's best-selling cars of all time! Look, you guys. There's always a party in my pants, but that's not nearly as good as a fiesta in mis pantalones. Welcome back to the show, D-Holes. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Ford Fiesta. <laughs> as early as 1963, the Ford company was thinking about making a world car. But the time wasn't right until 1972 when the little Fiat 127 and Renault 5 hatchbacks became huge hits with buyers. And then the 1973 oil embargo happened. Now I know that some of you just groaned on the toilet, but what can I do? It happened. So yeah, gas got expensive and the time was finally right to make an economy car. Ford's popular Escort was rear wheel drive and there were plans to make it bigger in the future. So there was room in the lineup for a smaller front wheel drive model. The deuce himself, Henry Ford II gave the orders to put one into production. Hey guys, remember that small car we were talking about? Uh-huh. Yeah, the front wheel drive one? Yeah, I think it's time to put it into production. Good work, Deuce. Good work. A massive new factory was constructed in Spain to build the new model with help from other plants in the UK and West Germany. The design was drawn up by Tom Giarda and Corazzi... Carrozzeria and Carrozzeria Ghia. He'd worked on the De Tommaso Pantera a few years earlier, so, uh, he definitely knew how to draw cars pretty good. <laughs> what they came up with was a small, well-proportioned, three-door hatchback with clean, simple lines. But however cool it looked, it still needed a name. The Ford marketing department wanted to call it the Bravo, but the Deuce personally shot that down. In a nod to the factory in Valencia, Spain, he wanted to call it something more fun, like the Spanish word for party. Fiesta, baby! Brand new Ford Fiesta Super Mini went on sale in Europe in the fall of 1976 and quickly became an essential part of Ford Europe's business. The Ford Fiesta, it's a very advanced baby. But in the US, that class of cars was only just starting to take off in the late 70s. The Volkswagen Rabbit and Honda Civic were selling like hotcakes, and Ford had nothing in the States to compete. So they threw on a catalytic converter, they put on some big bumpers, side markers, to get the Fiesta past US safety and emission standards, and started shipping them over in 1978. Europe's most successful new car in history comes to America, introducing Fiesta. Now let's be honest, Fiestas were never fast. They had small four-cylinder Ford Kent engines making barely 50 horsepower. The average horsepower of a new car today is 230. The lowest trim could barely hit 80 miles per hour while the top of the line might go 90. But the American versions got slightly bigger engines because that's how we do it here. <laughs> the Fiesta had better suspension than its competitors and it was smaller and lighter than the Rabbit, weighing in only at 1,700 pounds. People who have Mark I Fiestas will tell you they're more fun than Rabbits. Mark I, Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV, the abbreviation for this is MK, but don't say MK1, don't say MK2, say Mark I, Mark II, Mark III. And everyone at the Cars and Coffee would be like, damn, this kid knows his stuff. The car was a success, and Ford sold a million Fiestas by 1980, but you never know it in the States, because it was gone from here by the end of that year. Americans just weren't that into them, and the bigger Escort took its place in 1981. But also in 1980, Europe started getting the first of the hot Fiestas. Woo! It's getting hot in here! <laughs> Gary Coase, a local in the Detroit auto industry, presented Ford with a sketch drawn by Harry Weeks. Harry Weeks. You girls, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you just gotta have a, you just have a hairy week. <laughs> the design was a green and gray hatchback with racy fenders and an integrated front air dam. None of that stuff made it to production. But Ford 
didn't stop thinking about it. And eventually, they asked father and son, Donald and Jeff Healy, if they wanted to f with a Fiesta. And if the name Healy sounds familiar, it's because those guys invented those shoes with the wheels in the soles. Also, they were part of the British sports car company, Austin Healy. So Donald and Jeff said, oh yeah, mate, and whipped up a hot boy British racing green machine out of the US spec 1977 Fiesta. They wrung out 40% more horse purrs out of the engine, bigger wheels and stiffer suspension. Road and Track put it on their cover and said it was sick. But unfortunately, the Healy's didn't finish it until Ford was already pulling the Fiesta out of the US market. And only one Healy Fiesta was ever made. Lucky for Europe though, the 1980 Fiesta Supersport was testing the waters for an even hotter one, the 1981 XR2. With a 1.6 liter engine, sporty black trim, and round headlights instead of square ones, the XR2 was the first Fiesta to reach 100 miles per hour, and the first to officially become worthy of car enthusiast crushes. <laughs> With the Fiesta, i.e. party, officially dead in the States, other parts of the world got the second generation in 1983. The XR2 was also updated for Mark II form, but Ford didn't make any quicker version than that. They didn't want to cannibalize the sales of their performance escort models. Now, if you want to learn more about those, we already did an up to speed on the escort. I'm going to put a link in the description below. Otherwise, not much change in the Fiesta world. They made a diesel. Without an OEM hot version, aftermarket tuners filled the gap. Ford was actually okay with that, and customers who had mods installed at Ford approved vendors got to keep the factory warranties. This is a thing that Ford has always been pretty cool with. The Mark III Fiesta debuted in 1989 and was the first small car to offer analog brakes. Great! for driving in the rain when you gotta stop. That's awesome. Boo! Who wants to stop? Not me, baby. Stop. Can't. Can you at least just do it quiet, please? Yes, I guess I could be considerate and do it quietly. Now you already know the Fiesta is an economy car, but we're not gonna let this episode turn into a siesta. So I'm only gonna cover the juicy, beefy models from here on out. So get your bibs ready, babies. Cause we're getting boosty. Starting with the 1990 Mark III RS Turbo. The Fiesta RS Turbo got the same engine as the Escort RS Turbo. Engineers tightened up the suspension quite a bit because the torque steer was a handful. The interior was fitted with Recaro seats and you could tell you were about to get smoked by a Fiesta by the green exterior striping. The Fiesta RS 1800 that followed a couple years later had pretty much the same power but with smoother delivery because it ditched the turbo for a larger nationally aspirated motor. It was originally called the Zeta engine which you might now know as the Z-Tech engine. Ford had to change the name because Lancia threw an Italian hissy fit about someone else wanting to use the Greek alphabet. It's like, <laughs> ever heard of fraternities, Lancia? <laughs> the Mark IV Fiesta launched in the mid 90s and in some places it overlapped with the last few years of the Mark III. It was also sold as the Mazda 121 and even though the Mazda was exactly the same car, the 121 got better JD Power reliability ratings than the Fiesta. The German-built Ford Puma used the Fiesta's chassis and had a bigger engine, so that became an easy engine swap for just a little bit of more power, baby! Please, will you call a doctor? I can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, man, as soon as I finish this episode, I promise we will try and call you a doctor. <laughs> Tuners jumped all over this swap along with the facelifted Z-Tech S model. The facelift was so significant that people in the UK consider it the Mark V. Now it seems like the sales of Mark IVs and Vs might have also overlapped and with Fiestas being sold all over the world, it can make 
properly IDing all of the rest of the generations a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna probably stop labeling them now uh, so you guys don't yell at me. And also, please be forgiving with our editors. They do their best. At the turn of the millennium, Fiestas were as fun to drive as they'd ever been, and Ford had huge sales numbers to top it off. There were some sick concepts that didn't go anywhere, like the Fiesta Rally concept and the Fiesta RS concept. But even the standard cars had handling and steering feel way above average for an economical runabout. You ever heard of liftoff oversteer? It's a gas. And at long last in 2004, car enthusiasts were hashtag blessed with the best performance version yet. The Fiesta St. <laughs> the ST's got two liter Duratec engines making 150 herspers along with 17 inch alloy wheels and a bunch of other standard sporty stuffs. A few years later, Ford offered mound tune performance upgrades developed by Roush Technologies to UK customers that added as many as 35 extra ponies. A much sleeker, more modern looking Fiesta generation arrived by the end of the odds. And it was truly a global car. It was built everywhere from Venezuela to Russia, from Mexico to Thailand. And for the first time in 30 years, in 2010, the Fiesta returned to the States. Now our economy had just tanked and people wanted small cars again. And it was super easy for Ford to start slanging Fiestas back in their home country again. But better yet, we also got the new st With the EcoBoost 1.6 liter turbo engine doling out 197 Hurspers, baby. And when there's already boost running through a car's veins from the factory, it's so much easier to make. Oh, power, baby! Help me! Hold tight, buddy. We're almost done. I gotta talk about Ken Block. Ken Block drove them in a couple of Gymkhana videos. One of my best friends, Tanner Faust, won Global Rallycross Championships in them. Also, the Fiesta S2000 and R5 rally cars built by M Sport have done really well in WRC and European Rally Championships. <laughs> And if you want to drive one in the dirt, Team O'Neill Rally School has a fleet of them. They'll let you behind the wheel and show you how to drive them. There's been a whole road racing series just for Fiestas in the UK. But Americans keep proving that we love trucks and SUVs more than cars. And the ultimate party car has once again been pulled from the States as of 2020. At least my Aussie boys prove that they like to front wheel drive Hoon enough to get Ford to keep sending them the ST, but that's the only model that they get. But honestly, if I could choose one, that's the one I choose. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and everything else that we put out on Donut. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get an email every time we do something cool and new. Uh, go to donutmedia.com if you want some merch. There's also a link there if you wanna be part of our team. That's the best way to do it. I love you guys. Thanks again. That was a good episode. Can we please call a doctor now?